is in our midst. He is in you now have a little bit of an example of what a great crowd is that met our Lord today. <laughs> you know, human beings are blessed with the ability to focus on what is most important to them. And this helps us a lot when we are at school or at work because it requires us to tune out our distractions and give our mind a task before us. St. Paul, in his letter to the Philippians, says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Palm Sunday is one of these times that we all need to remember as we enter into the mystery of salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ, as he journeys to the cross, to the descent to Hades, and to his glorious resurrection. Nothing about this next week comes naturally or easy for us. We understand wanting our enemies to suffer, but not freely suffering for them. We understand religious people judging others with self-righteousness, but not loving sinners to the point of dying on their behalf. We understand wanting our own side to win, but not that true victory comes by laying aside all that looks like power in this world. The world can possibly understand a remote God in the heavens who does not understand how hard life it is down here on earth, but not one that hangs on a cross, occupies a tomb, and descends into Hades itself. Today, Jesus Christ, who revealed that he is the resurrection by raising his friend Lazarus from the dead, now enters Jerusalem as the long-awaited Messiah, and is welcomed by cheers of the crowd. But even before he gets to Jerusalem, the forces of darkness have already decided to kill Christ and Lazarus. For he was neither a conquering general, nor a Pharisee-like interpreter of the law, and those who had nationalistic religious uh, you might say, uh, desires for the Messiah were not going to see their schemes of dominations come to fruition. On Palm Sunday, it becomes clear that the Savior who enters Jerusalem today is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He is the Passover Lamb whose death and resurrection will conquer death itself. This Messiah... <laughs> The one who truly anoint, is, is anointed to save his people and the whole world will re be rejected by the leaders of the Jews and crucified under the authority of the Romans. And when he is lifted up on the cross, he will draw all who believe in him to himself, Jew, Gentile, male, female, rich, poor, all the nations, all the classes, all the races to a life of a kingdom that transcends this world and our petty divisions inside of it. Jesus Christ will not reign as a soldier or as a politician or a rich man, but as a suffering servant, a slaughtered lamb, a despised victim of torture. The crowds are right on Palm Sunday to welcome him as a conquering king whom God has promised that this would be fulfilled. But they misunderstand what the king he is and how he will conquer. For our Lord rules from a cross and from an empty tomb. Instead of killing soldiers, he kills death by allowing himself to be killed in the place of a magnificent stallion fit for a king he rides on a humble donkey that would impress no one. The crowd is right when they say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. 
they shout Hosanna, which is a plea for God's salvation to come upon the earth. So my dear ones, in the Holy Week that is coming up, Jesus is the Passover Lamb. I want to make these things clear for you, that, that Jesus is the Passover Lamb, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He is our champion, our Savior, and our King. Yet, His humility and love, the incarnate Son of God, suffers on the cross so that He might bring us to the heights of heaven and the joy of eternal life. And this week we journey to the cross, becoming participants in His passion. Like Lazarus, we will sit at the table with Him. Like Mary, we will anoint Him for burial. Like those gathered in Jerusalem, we will welcome Him with palms and praises. Like the disciples, we will eat the Passover with Him. Like His mother, the Theotokos, and the other faithful women, and the Apostle John, we will kneel before him at the cross. Like Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, we will bury him. Like the stunned murderers and the doubting apostles, we will marvel at the unspeakable joy of his resurrection. For what looks like complete failure is actually a total triumph, as we will see in the early hours of next Sunday. Holy Week is the climax of Jesus Christ's life and ours as well. For He goes to the cross for us. He dies and raises for our salvation, bringing to us unending joy and eternal life. And my dear ones, this is my call to you, that you all come to church this week. This is that time to lay aside your usual distractions, excuses, <laughs> obsessions, and enter into the passion of our Lord by worshiping with Him and us in the church, in the services this week. My dear ones, I say this a lot, but this week especially, this is the time where everything else is less. This week is the time that we make excuses for. You know, normally in our life we have lots of busy things and we make lots of excuses of maybe not to come to church to go to those things. This is now the opposite. Now we make excuse, excuses from the world to make sure that we can be in the church. If we can't attend every service, then we need to be praying at home, reading those Bible passages of Holy Week, and giving less attention to this world and more to God. My dear ones, it is time to embrace the great mystery of our salvation, of our, ta of our Savior's infinite love and mercy. Thus, we begin this by taking up our palms at the end of the liturgy. We will proceed out those doors, and we will start singing as we go around the church. You know, I, you know, as we are... Uh, you know, if you've tuned in at all to the havoc that's going on in our world, people want to gather at places and shout, we are gathering, and when we go out, we will be singing. We will begin by making an intentional focus to turn away from temptations, distractions, and unholy thoughts that become obstacles on our path, so that we can concentrate on our journey to the empty tomb. And we will shout as we do this. We will cry and sing as we do this. Blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.